Hey there, Postal here. So I've gone ahead and uh, finally earned the XP55, the Ascender. Uh, and I, in my opinion, a pretty neat looking plane. Um, flies really well. I absolutely love the way that it flies. Um, but it's very... well, it's unique, right? Um, so here's the aircraft details, and what are we looking at here? So you'll notice that it clearly has uh, four of the 12.7 millimeter machine guns on the front. Your standard armament for your American light fighters, the P-51D, um, excuse me, A, has the same exact um, gun setup. And most people would um, not be remiss to try to compare these two planes. Obviously you've got a a premium American fighter and you've got your standard. American fighter, your P-51A. Well, what's similar about them? Well, the guns themselves clearly are the same guns. Uh, one big difference you're going to notice about the guns, though, is the way that this the guns are set up on the P-51A. I don't have one in uh, my depot anymore. It, they're actually on the wings. I suppose the best um, comparison to this would be looking at the P-51H. Granted, there's more guns on here, but they're propped onto the wing on all the Mustangs. Um, when you're looking at the Ascender, though, those guns are right on the fuselage. To me, that's a much better setup. It's actually one of the... Um, I'm okay with the gun style on the Mustangs. Uh, what's frustrating about it is having them so wide out on the wings. It makes it great for taking down bombers and ground attacks. Uh, but when you're trying to dogfight, you really want central location on those guns, and the Ascender has them. So besides the guns themselves, literally everything else about these two planes um, couldn't be diff more different. The gun placement, obviously. The survivability, we'll skip that because they're light fighters at tier 6, they're all going to be about the same. But airspeed. So we're looking at the stats for a P-51A, completely stock, it's already higher than an Ascender, and then you're going to be able to boost it up, it's about 54 on the airspeed. So like most Mustangs, pretty, pretty good speed for its tier. Maneuverability, significantly less. Um, again, like most Mustangs, lower than most other light fighters for its particular tier, minus the German fighters. Altitude performance. Uh, again, this is uh, with a stock airframe, so it's actually going to be about 53 or 54, significantly higher than the altitude performance on an XP-55. So besides the actual gun type, everything else about these two planes is um, is completely dissimilar. A plane that I've found that they're at, the Ascender can actually be moderately compared to would be the KI-61. Um, now the KI line is kind of up and down for me. KI-61 was one of the good planes on that particular line. Um, and you know, well, how are we comparing it? I think this particular plane was good. Well, I'll, I'll explain why I thought this particular plane was good. But it compares pretty favorably to an XP-55, or rather the 55 compares favorably to the KI. So w the Japanese uh, light fighter, uh, this is opposite the zero line. The KI line, the altitude performance is basically the same. The maneuverability is basically the same. The airspeed is a little bit higher on the KI, but it's basically the same. Survivability is good. Again, it's tier 6 light fighter, so it's gonna, we kind of disregard that. The biggest difference between these two would be the, the guns. On the KI, um, we have 20 mil guns, which a lot of tier 6 planes other than the P-51A have... Um, at least uh, some sort of armor in that includes 20 mils. This one has two of the 12.7 and two of the 20 mils, whereas your XP55 or your P51 only has four of the 12.7. And so what does this really mean? One of the reasons I like the KI-61 uh, is because it you know, it was just good enough in all of this and its guns were pretty good to be able to you know, get behind something and take it down. Something you're going to notice in the XP55 is you know you you have the maneuverability to get behind somebody maneuverability that you wish you had in the p51 uh, but those guns those guns um th if you get we're frustrated by the p51a's guns you're going to be frustrated with like, the xp55 guns they're the same thing right 
It's saving grace, honestly, is that the fact that they're all centralized. It does make a huge difference, and you're going to notice that in the gameplay. Um, yeah, you've got four little pea shooters, but at least your accuracy feels better because you've got all four hitting one place. Whereas with the P51A, sometimes you've only got two of them hitting because of the the um, just typical dogfighting that plane's trying to get away from you you're not going to be able to ha um, necessarily hit all four at the same time just because you, you might not be able to um, predict exactly where they're going. These four tend to hit for longer and that's really what saves this particular plane. Where I didn't keep the P-51A even though I, I relatively enjoyed it, um, I would keep the XP-55 if it was on a tech tree line because those guns placement makes such a difference on such a maneuverable plane and so that's why I typically well, when people ask me about the plane I compare it to the KI-61 more than I ever compare it to the P-51 I'll simply mention the guns and then throw everything else out the, the window um, so yeah let's go ahead and take a look at some of the gameplay um, and that way we can kinda see see the, the XP-55 in battle and you know put it where it does its best work alright so I've actually changed the paint scheme on this particular plane just because I do like to have um, as much concealment and AA gun resistance as possible we've got a tier 6 battle here and taking a quick look I am the most maneuverable plane on the okay. field Pilots, Which I definitely like, right? Action. So let's, let's go ahead go. and get this garrison flipped, and then we'll go to a airfield. All right, so you may have noticed in the barracks that I had this particular plane set up to be the most maneuverable plane I could. Um, it didn't matter how much I adjust the, uh, you know, help the airspeed or help the altitude; it wasn't going to make a huge difference. Well, that was quick. What I can do, I could do though, is make this plane as maneuverable as possible, and that way, um, as poor as the guns are, at least if I'm behind them and not um, in front of them, uh, the enemy won't be able to really do anything about that. So you can kind of see, I'm just kind of putzing along here, right? I've got some other planes. It, it's not necessarily faster than a lot of other planes out on the um, battlefield right now. It's not uh, slower either, it is pretty middling. Um, at tier 6 is where you know the light fighters kind of start to separate themselves as far as altitude. So although this is uh, rated at a 40, it's still relatively okay as, you know, compared to um, its counterparts. And really the way you're going to play this is like you would uh, a KI or even a Yak. Um, the Yak is relatively similar. Um, but I just think the KI is a better um, example of how you'd use this particular plane. Let's see if we can get this. Alright. So you can see already a difference. If you've ever played a, a Mustang, a P-51A, actually really any of the Mustangs, the difference of being able to have those machine guns you know, all going towards the same target compared to having them spread out a little bit is significant. And I've also made sure that on my um, besides maneuverability boosters, I've got my accuracy boosters going. I want to make sure that I'm getting the most out of these guns. There's not a lot that I can get out of them, but they do fire quick enough that it is really the, one of those death by a thousand paper cuts kind of situations. And if I can make those thousand paper cuts um, more accurate and hit more quickly, then kudos to me. So just come on, standard American machine guns here, so they're rarely ever going to overheat. A little frustrating there that it took that long, um, but again, if you've played the American fighter lines, you're kind of used to that, right? Some games it's just going to be ridiculously, ah, that guy's going away from me, ridiculously long to um, kill something that you wanted to kill. There's a P-40, Tier 5 American, and that's annoying that they took this, but that's okay. I feel very confident that I'm going to be able to out-dogfight just about anything I run into, typically. 
You know, I'm looking out for yaks, I'm looking out for zeros. I look out for KIs just because if they've got um, they've got it set up really well, it has a chance of being able to outmaneuver me. Stay in this particular area. Yak 9. Luckily it's just a Yak 9 and not a Yak 1M. You can see this thing just pivots on a dime. It's really quite nice, especially at this lower tier. You know, not everybody's got their, um, hello, plane set up to be able to uh, fight something like this. So, man, I've got somebody chasing me, huh? Oh, there's P-51A. So let's go ahead and... Use the same guns on him. Too bad we've got like 40 million people around us. Yep, just too many people, unfortunately. Uh, no blues over there to help us. Let's go ahead and hop back into battle. You can see that concentrated fire really makes a huge difference. <clears throat> and unfortunately, these guns, the way they handle, you know, running into anything significantly heavy, um, you know, is all the more frustrating. A ground pounder, for example, can take you forever to melt. A bomber, if you can even get up there, is going to take you forever. Fortunately, P-51A is doing exactly what he needs to do. He's using his energy, using his speed to get up there. Um, but if he's not paying attention, he's not paying attention. He's got the speed. You can see he's going to outdistance me. But if he's going to try to dogfight me, he's going to lose. And he lost. So, now we need to get ourselves back down a little bit. You can see the altitude performance isn't terrible. It's just comparing it to the P-51A, uh, you know, the altitude performance of basically anything at this tier, as far as the fighter is concerned, is going to seem relatively terrible. Try to see if the rear gunner hit me now, not somebody behind me, luckily. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Over. And pivot, pivot, pivot. You know, this just has the accuracy to be able to melt them down quicker than they realize that you can melt them down. Granted, you're not hitting them with 20 mils. You're not doing anything a yak would do. Um, if this had 20 millimeter guns on it, I would certainly be a happy camper. Um, and it is, it is kind of one of those situations where you know, the KI-61 has those um, those 20 mil guns. It can take down I better not go up there. It can take down um, planes, big planes, better than this particular aircraft can, right? But that's not what this aircraft is meant to do. This aircraft is really meant to take down the light fighters and oop, watch out behind me. Um, you know, own the sky that way. Yowzas, who's shooting at me? The enemy is about to win. Push harder. I'd really like to be able to flip another, um, flip another sector, but in the meantime, I guess we can get over here quick enough. You can see, I can just kind of go wherever I want to go, and as long as I'm not, um, 
too crazy reckless, the are ours. I'm we able to just kind of contained. own whatever I run into. So let's see what this baby does against one of these ground pounders. Granted, I think that's tier 5. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And yeah, it's just it's too much. Watch out for these fighters first. P-39N1 is a dangerous plane. And it's got enough maneuverability to... Um, just enough maneuverability to be dangerous. Come on, let's get some Mars. But um, this plane can can really kind of own a lot of other light defeated. fighters. So a final push. Oh, there's game. I'm proud of you, pilots. Head back home. All right, so a pretty darn good game, I would say. Let's go ahead and head on back to the hangar. Okay, and uh, so I am back into the hangar here. Another perk of the plane that we didn't even get a chance to to touch was the fact it is going to be making extra silver, so 182,000 silver out of this particular game. Got a couple of the uh, medals. We were able to pull a grade one fighter and got a bunch of other nifty little medals going on here. So, you know, 18 frags, always nice. Wish I could have uh, gotten a couple more, but it is what it is. And, you know, really had some good support from the, um, the additional Mustang on our team. So, what you know what does this plane do well hopefully that video showed you that well it can turn on a dime um you know i was able to identify in the beginning of the match that i was able to outmaneuver everybody and you got a lot more confidence kind of just going into the middle of a hornet's nest and um owning it what if i had you know a yak 1m or you know an a7m or something like that on the other team well obviously you need to be uh, quite a bit more careful in those situations but if you're paying attention you can get behind them these guns um, will be able to take down you know some of those planes relatively quickly you know if it's a full health a7m or something like that well you might not want to get into a brawl with that but if you see him at half health if you sneak up behind him you can probably get rid of him before he has the ability to out turn you um, you know the altitude performance was not terrible it's again just comparing it to the p51a which you really shouldn't do these planes are completely different uh, you really want to compare this to a KI-61 or even a Yak, um, but this has better altitude performance than a Yak. So I hope this video was uh, helpful. If it was, you know, please give it a like. If, if you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Um, and tell me, have, have you been able to buy or earn the uh, XP-55? And if so, what are your thoughts on the on the plane? Um, you know, I've heard uh, I've heard some mixed results. Not a lot of people have said that they particularly like the plane. I enjoyed the American line, and I enjoyed the Yak line. So to me, this is kind of a mix of those two planes um, in the best way. Uh, and and so I'm enjoying this plane as well. I am currently grinding on the Vampire. I just started that, so we'll see how that particular line goes once I've earned that, which will probably be a couple months, I'm sure. Uh, just, it's a pretty uh, in-depth grind on that one. But anyway, once I've earned that, I will go ahead and, and produce a video on the Vampire as well, although I know it had been uh, available for purchase. This particular plane's never been f available for purchase, which is why I wanted to kind of grind it first. And I'm glad I did. Uh, it's a fun plane. Um, it, it, it truly is. So, And it's unique. I like that about it. I, I think it looks pretty cool, too. Uh, to me, some you know I've kept some planes just because I like the way they look. Um, I've kept some planes in spite of the way they look. I'm looking at UYAC-15. Uh, but this plane is, is both um, enjoyable and you know just a beautiful plane. So uh, do keep in mind that I will be streaming, um, if you're watching this video on Friday, I'll be streaming this Saturday night on Twitch. Uh, the description in the um, memos below. But otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.